So I'm David Haug, um, Superintendent Jefferson R7. I'm joined by Mrs. Bosler and Mrs. Watson. We just did a long form on iReady, and I think something kind of came out of it that I never really heard, but I think was awesome. So the short part of this introduction is this. The next few minutes, if you've got a child that's struggling in either reading or math, particularly grades K through 5, we just had a very detailed discussion about the minutes that iReady puts out there, if they're meeting those minutes, they're seeing those, those stretch gains. Um, and that they have worked with families already to get devices home so they can do some extra time at home with you. So I encourage you, if you've got a child you're worried about with math or reading, um, take a few minutes and then reach out to these two and we can definitely work with you all because we're seeing some really neat things with those families that have kind of gone above and beyond and taken that home. It's worth your time if you've got a a child you're worried about with the math or reading. Thank you. Hey, I'm David Haug, Superintendent Jefferson R7 School District. And as you've, if you've joined us for other podcasts, we're going to focus in specifically on kind of that technology inclusion in the classroom and instruction um, with our choice to use iReady. And maybe give you a little bit of an insight of why we changed and kind of went away from our previous model to where we are now. I'm, I'm joined by two outstanding educators and Tina Bosler. Uh, and Delana Watson, um, both longtime administrators in our district. You, you really long time. You've been here since the get-go, right? Yep. And you, how many years in when you became an uh, administrator? You taught how many years? Six years. Six years, quick. I did five, so I beat you by one. <laughs> but anyway, Miss um, Watson, how long have you been in the district? It's, time is flying. You're even 2016-ish? This is year 10. Oh, my goodness. 2014 you got here? 2014, 15, 15. 15, 16 school year. It's crazy. Start of year 10. I think I had hair back then. All right. So, Mr. if you watched our... Mr. Tech, Marshall did. Yeah. <laughs> I got called Mr. Marshall the other day by a little somebody in your building. They said, hey, Mr. Marshall. I said, hey, how's it going? <laughs> Teacher's laughing. I didn't even <laughs> why. He's a legend. All right. Um, so, if you watched our technology one, Mr. Schaefer and I kind of discussed maybe our views on trying to make sure we use programs aligned throughout the district. Um, and I give these two a lot of credit a couple years ago uh, as part of, what, about three years ago? Uh, you started to have meetings at the end of the spring to talk about the different platforms. So, before we, and sometimes just take the names off the platforms that we use, but maybe this is more of a concept. So, before we went to iReady, what was sort of the model in your building to simply assess and then try to provide supplementary, supplementary material before we get, and maybe it'll make more sense for our, our, our patrons. Sure. We had, we used several models. So we had, um, of course, you know, when the district went one-to-one, -one, we had multiple options with apps and everything. And so when teachers would find apps that they feel would support our reading curriculum, they would just ask for those apps to be added. And those apps just kept adding on and adding on. But then whenever we would sit down for the data, we would find, you know, teacher A may have used, you know, this one app for the multitude of her supplemental instruction, whereas teacher B really hadn't used that app. Um, she was using another app that, you know, also benefited the students. And so it was hard for us to sit down as a group of four educators together, all working with second grade or first grade students to determine where the gaps were because everyone was using different supplementary resources, if that makes sense. It does, and I, I kind of go back to, you were also testing in one program and then trying, the teacher was having to decipher, and I think this is a good start to this podcast because really that's the issue that, or the concern that I had looking at and saying, okay, four different teachers using four different programs to, for remediation or to help support, but then, asking a teacher to even try to decipher that data. Yeah. And we were testing from one platform. So yes. you're right that we yeah. were testing from one platform, but, but that platform was only used for testing and that was it. So it was one snapshot of the student at that one time. They could have had a bad day. So it was really hard to put, to know how valid that test measure was because it was just that. It was just a single test measure that happened at the beginning of the year and at the end of the year. So really, when you look at curriculum standards in a, any, anybody's a curriculum, K-12, a lot of these platforms, whether it's the testing part of it or the remediation, are tied to these standards. So a teacher might say, well, in this platform, in these standards, they didn't do well. And then trying to match it to the next platform can kind of be a challenge. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I know we experienced a lot of that at the high school, and I think our staff did an amazing job of starting to tie that together with our resources. But I think at the elementary, it's difficult. And then also maybe just the unity of the team itself. And so how – I'm going to go ahead and ask you this, and I'm going to ask the same thing of Delena. How has your staff responded to the change to get away from – a smorgasbord or a, yeah. like a, a cafeteria style where you're just grabbing stuff to use to basically a one size fits all on some level. I mean, they, they feel like both they themselves as educators and the students have greatly benefited from it because um, it not only assesses the students and tells you where they're at, but then it creates a plan or a path. It's called a my path for them based upon that data. So then you know that when you put your students on their iReady my path, that they are receiving extra instruction in the area that they either failed in or didn't perform well on, on the assessment. And so there's no, it, it takes the guesswork out of it, you know, I guess. And it, it, it really takes a lot of the work on, off the teacher's plate because you already know that what they're doing is aligned to what they need. And we assess three times a year. So, you know, it, it recalibrates in December when we assess again and provides a new path for them. So that has been very beneficial because, again, they, they know that they're getting what they need, and then the teachers can add more to that. And this is a deeper discussion, but I think when you look at how many kids are in large school districts in the state, it's an astronomical number. And so you start looking at, like, professional development for staff and what large school districts that, that do well, real, and really all large school districts, they're teachers and they have massive teams and they have these common assessments and they're able to kind of move kids around even as they need it. We don't have that luxury at a small school. So I think that's how I've always approached technology. Where does it fill the gaps and, and take the pressure off a teacher, but also making sure that the student is moving from the test part of it, the assessment part to the direct instruction. instruction so I right. This is sort of what I think small schools need to rely on technology for. It's not try to do the latest and greatest and the fanciest out there. Is be good at what, be, understand what you're doing with the testing, and then get them aligned to. The, there's a seamless transition to what the supports they need. Mm -hmm. I think yeah. that iReady is is fitting that bill. It could be another platform we were using, but that's what we were trying to get to. Yeah. And there are so many reports in the iReady model available for the teachers so they can see exactly how the students are doing with every path that they're taking, whether it's comprehension or vocabulary. They're able to see exactly how they're performing on those so then they know if they need to support them additionally in their small group work or maybe provide additional lessons in that area. So this is year three of iReady. I'm going to transition to Mrs. Watson here, but I think it's important to understand Mrs. Watson deserves a lot of credit and her staff because – Year one, they went kind of the full platform of the testing into iReady. So they, this is year three for them. Correct. And in year one, you were using it for the testing only and still using the kind of the smorgasbord, the cafeteria style apps. Yes. Because we did want to take that seriously and pull it back if it wasn't a fit for us. Um, we believe in it's a good fit. So you were the pilot. Uh, I thought you guys did a great job. So thanks for being the guinea pig, for lack of a better term. But th those are meetings that the public doesn't see of really taking this seriously and um, really making sure that we've got the program that, f that I think that's been a big push from us at central offices. Let's get a program that we know, understand. It may not fit everything everybody wants, but we're good at it, if that makes sense. So to go back three years, how was that? How did your teachers respond? Because it was a similar model over here where, you were using one type of test and sort of a, a, a whole splattering of different resources. And the resources you were using weren't even really close to what they were using. So now it's kind of all aligned. Correct. So that was a huge uh, shift in mindset and um, just camaraderie. I think K-5, it allowed us to have similar conversations when talking about data. And knowing when our students were coming over, they were already used to the platform that we were using. Um, moving into the my path gave us better and deeper discussions as a as a team. The diagnostic allows the teachers to look down at the same data, and then the my path, any teacher can walk in and assist a student. They don't need to do the guesswork. So a new a new teacher could come in, and they have a great lesson plan or resource to allow them to be successful. I think the my path 
like Ms. Bosler said, um, only supports our students individually. And then within iReady, we're able to use those diagnostics and really drive our whole group instruction at the grade level they need. So our teachers are able to extend that learning so much more. Individualized instruction is happening at their Chromebooks and then in small group, but our whole group lessons still are hitting those um, grade level standards that we need to hit before they move on. And you actually have a different type of support for reading. You have two title teachers in your building yes. and then we kind of shifted the model of what we were doing in your building to just from reading to math but I read is a big part of that so it all kind of transitions back and I'm not saying the kids are just online all the time but no. uh, sometimes they can do the group group works with the teachers in person but also getting that supplementary work but there's commonality between K through five right now even into the middle school they're using it as the testing platform so we're consistent K8 I think it touches into the high school some with some of the um, special education courses. But so I'm going to ask a different question here. And both of you are uh, moms of, of uh, children who play in sports. So I'm going to give this example. Anytime you're, anytime you have a new system come in or a new coach, there's like, okay, by week 10 in football or game 20 in basketball, um, you know, at week one, maybe the whole playbook isn't in yet right? Like it takes time to kind of build to where you want to be with everything. So kind of with that model or kind of maybe an example, when you start this on day one, your teachers aren't fully comfortable with it. So you were, you're ahead of this as far as you both were on schedule with the testing part of it, but you were a year ahead of the implementation. What, Mrs. Watson, what, like how, I guess two questions, how long did it take for your teachers to feel like maybe they were kind of up to speed? And then if you had to say, a hundred percent this is like how much more growth is ahead of us or are we kind of are the teachers knowledge kind of capped out if that makes sense i would say year one was definitely clunky because we were just trying to figure out the program um, i'll give credit to rebecca wright for really diving in and getting to know the program inside and out and being our lead um, we're at year three and we're still learning we've added another tool to that we use the um ela toolkit which is going to help supplement our reading and our writing program and it's a lot but i think my teachers like that challenge. They like to know that they are always learning. Um, so I don't know that we're at game 20 yet, but we're definitely moving there. Not a game one anymore. No, we're not a game one. <laughs> yeah. I would say that first year was probably clunky for us or whatever. We relied heavily on Ms. Wright and Ms. Watson to kind of um, give us some PD in that area, professional development in that area. But even now, <clears throat> a few years in, you know, I just read over some professional development plans that our teachers uh, worked on this past week, and a lot of them had I already still and looking at that data and diving deeper into the data and how it benefits their students as part of their professional development plan. So, um, you know, seeking they're continually seeking ways to enhance that reading instruction and the reading performance of our students. And so I think that's just something that we will always continue to strive for because sure. um, just is ever changing. You know, it's just um, continues to grow and develop. What I like about iReady is they're owned by their own company. And if you join us in the technology one, we just, it's, it's like so many companies have bought each other up. It's important to me that the people own what they're doing and not just trying to fill a need. I, I do appreciate about that and a lot of the other platforms, but that's important to me. So, yeah. um, Let's talk about the, how, how do I say this, the, so within our CSIP, we have a goal of that, and again, it's a broader discussion, it's in another podcast, but we want to be 5% higher than the state average in every ELC or MAP tested area, and we really hit a ton of those uh, this year. Um, the vast majority did. So that's part of these the use of the online resources is not just so, so the teacher kind of gets a little bit of a backstop so they kind of know where the kids are and where they're not and so i suppose it's a little different but maybe not in the elementary like the teacher has five sections at the high school teaching the same class first four hours the teacher feels like it's going great but fifth hour something happens to where the class is distracted either somebody maybe gets sick and leaves or somebody's called out and there's a distraction or somebody broke up with somebody. You just never know. But the teacher does those assessments and realize my first four classes went very well, but I've got to go back and hit these points. So that's the long and short of it. But when you start to tie that together, you know, we, DESE is a bit of a transition here about what platforms you can and can't be using. This is a DESE approved 
yes. platform. And you kind of mentioned earlier, both of you did, that Desi had, did not really ask for any sort of changes to iReady. So we're, I guess the point is we're trying to look for reliable data. It may not be point for point, and it may not tell you, boy, they're going to score this on the test. It's like a practice ACT. It's never perfect, but it kind of gives you a range, like low, mid, high. So kind of explain that concept and how you're looking at scores. They can actually break it down into three areas or five areas. Um, so that that is helpful, I know. Um, to really see where, what quadrant, I guess you'd say, the student performs on, what percentile the student performs on. Um, but I know from one of the things that my teachers was asking is, how, how do we stack up to other districts using iReady in the state of Missouri, or how do we stack up nationally? And so I reached out to the iReady representative this summer to get that data, and we were pleasantly surprised to find out that we were scoring above all the state performances, the state average for um, in the state of Missouri, and then also nationally in both math and reading in all areas in grades K through eight. So um, yeah, so we found out that we were performing well. So I don't know if I'm asking, answering your question. You are, and I, gosh, I could, I could talk for hours about this statistical stuff, and she's laughing again. Stevie's always laughing because she knows I get off on tangents, but <laughs> It's so hard. It's so hard to move scores at a small school. It's just statistically, when you have just eighty kids or seventy kids a class, you just can't break away. Um, and so that's why we looked at the five percent because we think that's fair, um, in the sense that that's telling us as a whole, as a district, we're still moving forward. Now some have bigger jumps, and some of them may be in that yellow range or able to kind of push up. You know, what are we doing to, to make that better? But. I guess the, the real question is, is do you feel like the data you're seeing is reliable? And I'm, I think to the outside eye, well, it's not matching point to point. That's not really the point, but the data you're seeing, is it helping you push things forward? I think the most important point is to say that our students are growing. And I would say with both diagnostics, our children are growing. And I think for our teachers and our staff, I think they really look at that historical data. So did our third graders improve to fourth grade? And did the as did they improve to fifth grade? And are we looking at third graders and how did they do in eighth grade now? Do we do our job in the elementary to prepare them for what's coming ahead? So we look, we dive into the historical data, not just the last year data, so that we can see where can we grow and what standards are we weak in year after year after year. And then we pull back into our iReady and our other resources to make sure we're growing our students. But I don't know that any test would be 100% accurate because then we'd all be buying it and everyone would be using the same platform. It's yeah. tough to measure. But another thing that iReady does, um, right when they take that first diagnostic at the beginning of the year, it gives you two goals yes. um, to measure from. So it gives you an expected growth, uh, an anticipated target growth, um, what you would expect after a year's worth of instruction on the my path and um, you know from the classroom teacher. And then it gives you a stretch growth target too to say that this student is going to grow beyond that year growth. And so that's really a good form of measurement to see, you know, middle of the year, if they're on track to meet their targeted growth or if they're on track to meet stretch growth. It, it's a really good gauge for us to see where students are. So, I mean, I, I know from our viewpoint, we were happy to see last year, and that was really our was that our first year doing first all the, full yeah, year, yes. first full year with everything um, to see how many students actually exceeded that anticipated just target growth and they met their stretch growth. And actually, as we looked back at the historical reports that Ms. Watson was just talking about, we were able to make a correlation with if we had students that were able to meet their minutes, what iReady recommends for minutes per day hmm. um, on their my path, that those were the students that met their stretch growth. Whereas if you weren't able to meet those minutes in your classroom for whatever reason, that those students had a tendency not to meet that stop there extra for a growth. Because I was kind of trying to phrase maybe the way parents, what would a parent need to know? I know it sounds crazy, and I know it's sometimes a difficult sometimes when you're dealing with your own child and maybe they're, maybe they're struggling. But as a whole... There's so much data and research, and I think that's sometimes these good virtual companies do, is they're able to say, if you do this, you should be moving here. Mm -hmm. So I want you to repeat that again. Mm -hmm. if, if a kid is trying to, if, if as a parent you want them to get to this platform and know what's possible, 
time in it, time in the program. Yes, time in the program is key. And I think knowing that now and after we see that historical data, like we will be using that data for like if we have students that need extra remediation for steps and things like that, we can send those devices home because that's easy for the parents too to know that all I have to do is get them on here and then it does the lessons for them. It tells them where they need to go versus me trying to sit down and do homework with the child and maybe I don't know what that child, what the outcome is supposed to be. So that takes the guesswork off the parents. We did that a little bit last year with students, um, but I think looking at that data this year and seeing how heavy it, it is dependent upon how much time we can give them in the classroom for that, if we're unable to do that because maybe the student gets pulled out for extra services for Title I reading or for speech services or you know, other services and things like that, it would be a good idea for us to collaborate with the parents to say, okay, we're going to send this home, do this three nights this week for just 15 minutes, and you know, we would expect to see the growth. So I'm going to ask a blunt question here. How, how much do our parents know this is available? Uh, probably not. Um, you mean to send home? Yeah. Yeah. No. No, this, is, this has been great. We may have two podcasts come out of this. Oh, I'm sorry, I keep pushing this. But do you see the same thing at Telegraph that how important is it to connect with the family? Maybe that's the greatest thing we have in this podcast is to market that going forward. Because I think that's huge. I, I agree with Tina wholeheartedly. And um, I think our parents, the more they get to see the platform and see what it does for our students, and it really does take the guesswork out of it. It allows them to grow that much further. Um, we utilize it for our tutoring students, and there are many that would take it home and utilize that. Um, parents who wanted homework, we would allow it to go home a couple nights a week. How, how many just roughly families did that last year? Probably 30 in my building. What was the feedback? Not much, but the students grew. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the feedback right. didn't come from the parents, but the students were showing success, and they were they were moving through their paths. Um, another thing I sometimes, like... Sometimes no news is good news. Correct. I'm, so go ahead. And so. another thing is that we always kind of refer back to the students who are struggling. iReady also supports our enrichment of our students, too. So our students who are advanced, it doesn't it allows them to get some of that coursework that they need that's above grade level. So that's a benefit of iReady as well. So we're, we're seeing multiple things that are happening within iReady. So the question I was going to ask, and we kind of touched on before we started, was how does what does a parent need to know about this? And it was basically most parents generally just want to know that their child's on reading level. And I think what iReady does in its simplest form is if the child starts to drop, we're catching it instead of a year or two down the road, we're catching it now. We're starting to catch those strands, I think is maybe the confidence we're going to provide our parents in this program. But I'm, what I'm really hearing today is, is that we all want what's best for our kids, but from this, the data that we're seeing that's already been done for us, and if you're seeing that if the kids are meeting their minutes, they're seeing those, those gains, mm -hmm. if I could just make sure our community is aware of that, and if you maybe start with that conversation, can you get a device to bring home and match those up? I think we've kind of hit on something here today that we really need to market with our families. So mm -hmm. anything else with iReady that you need to throw in there that you would like our families to be aware of? No. No. I would say kind of the frustrating thing is, is maybe the time it takes to test is a little bit longer than our old test, but I really think that it is transitioning into richer for every extra minute they're testing is one less extra minute as teacher is trying to figure out what they're doing. So let's say it takes five minutes to five to 10 minutes, and I'm being probably too conservative there, to figure out what, where each kid needs to be placed. The computer's doing that for us. Mm -hmm. I think that's the advantage here, even though the testing is a little bit longer. Is that a, is that a fair statement? I agree. All righty. Thank you for joining us here. And uh, you two do a great job in your buildings. I can't say it enough and don't appreciate can't, can't show my appreciation enough to everybody involved here, but uh, we've got some great people working hard every day. So thanks for joining us. Thank you.